is dedicated to all my beautiful queens, all my beautiful ladies out she there. She is a queen. Good queen. You got it, girl. She is a queen. You better represent. Good queen. Good queen. Go. She's a queen about her business. So thank you guys for joining another episode of the Q Chat. Today, my guest is a legend. I have Miss Frida Payne. We all know her from the hit classic Band of Gold. I'm just so excited to have her on this platform. She has a new single that's coming out, Just Be With You. And we're just going to chat about her single. Of course, her amazing journey and her longevity in this industry and of course my favorite topic self-love how are you doing today ma'am i'm doing fine i'm doing fine it's a beautiful day here in la and and uh it's nice and warm not really hot yet but hot but warm enough to you mm -hmm. know yeah to enjoy the weather and go outside and sit outside by the patio and you know just uh enjoy being here and being being alive <laughs> Yes, yes. Like I said, I'm so excited to speak with you. Band of Gold, of course, is iconic. So I'm just grateful to speak with you. So I definitely wanted to chat up regarding your history and, of course, your new single. So like I said, Band of Gold came out in 1970, if I'm not mistaken. What have been oh, some yeah, that's of correct. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. okay. So what have been some of your keys or secrets if you want to share just on just your long, on your longevity like i said you've been around in this industry for a great period of time and that song now people recognize that song you know and that's just a great thing and a blessing so what has been some of your keys to just the longevity in this ever changing music industry well one of the well i can tell you right off the bat is never get locked into just doing one thing never i mean there's some people some artists that we all know of that are i call them one um a one trick pony mm -hmm. you know that they just do one thing one genre of music and that's it they never sing anything else they let's say if it's a blues singer or a country and western singer you know well country and western and in, in my opinion sometimes they have a little bit more longevity than let's say a, a pop or even an R&B singer, uh, because they kind of like, the, their music is more, I call it like earth uh, telling stories, not just relying on a funky beat to carry the, the narrative, you know, the message. And, um, but I would say my key is that I, I can switch up. I, let's say Band of Gold was, classify it came out it was like r b and pop r b pop i'm not just the r b pop singer i'm a jazz singer also i do theater so i can do a, a broadway tour you know i've done it you know i did uh duke ellington sophisticated ladies i, I i've done about six or seven separate companies at different times stretched over a 20 something year period uh even in europe I, I did jelly's last jam that was a broadway musical with that starred gregory hines on broadway and um i did that for uh well i it was a, a tour that lasted almost a whole year and it was and it was starring maurice hines it was Maurice Hines and Savion Glover who did, who Savion did the original, the original, original uh, Broadway run. And I, I also did the, uh, what they call the world debut of it when it was launched right here in Los Angeles at the Mark Taper 
Forum Theater downtown in the, at the Music Center. I was in that. Uh, I didn't do the actual Broadway run, but I did the, what they, they called the national tour. And it was the first and only national tour starring Maurice Hines and Savion Glover and myself. And that, like I said, that lasted a year. But then again, in the meantime, and between all these other years, that, and that was back in the 90s, uh, sophisticated ladies, that was the 80s, and then went into the 90s. And then I did uh, the Blues in the Night, another one that had started on Broadway. And then there were different companies that, that uh, were created. And, and I did uh, like six or seven companies of Blues in the Night, you know? So in between doing uh, theater, like performing arts centers and doing, going to Europe and, and the UK and doing the R and the Motown tours and the R and B tours with with Mo, with R and B artists, I was doing theater. So and then I've done some movie work too. Not a lot, but I've done some movie. I do a um, you know if I get booked to do if they reach out to me to do a film, I do that as well. So that's my that's the key to my longevity right there. Right, stay busy and work, and yeah, but not yeah, just do. You know, you got to do it. You just just stay, but you just can't wait on the next R and B tour or the next job where they just want you to come out and sing "Band of Gold" and bring the boys home, and that's it. And you're with ten other artists. No, that's not going to do it. You gotta, you gotta be flexible, and you gotta be able to do more than one thing. Yeah, one genre I, of music, really. Right. That, that's the key. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of, you know, I wanted to congratulate you on your new single, Just Be, Just To Be With You. Now, I know, like, you have an upcoming EP. It's untitled right now, right? Um, and I Totally. We haven't even, we haven't even started recording the new songs yet. Uh, it's, but there, it's my next, let's say it's my next venture with Michael Sutton, who, okay. by the way, is the producer and the, and the uh, creator of that song, Just To Be With You. He produced it and wrote it. And, and also he played on it. A also a guy named uh, Mitchell, Mitchell Coleman, he played on it as well. And um, that's gonna be coming out. Well, well, Just To Be With You is already out. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're talking about it now. And I really, when I first heard the track, uh, the track was originally done by uh, Anissa, Anissa Sutton. And I heard it and it was like, wow, I love that track. Wow. And I like the way she's doing it. And, and I mentioned it to Michael and he said, well, you know what? I can do something similar to that for you. And then he let me know a day later, he said, well, you know, Nisa said, if you want to cut it again, you know, if you want to cut it, I'll do another track for you. And that'll be, and that's okay. So that's what happened. And because uh, I, I said, I just love, and I, not only the track, it was the lyrics. Mm. It's like, it's like a two, you got to have two things going. You got to have a good, a nice feeling, a good track and you, but you got to have a good song. You got to mm. have a good lyric and the lyric I could resonate with because that's how, that's how um, it's a personal thing. So that's how I felt just to be with you. Mm. Thinking wow. about somebody you want to be with. <laughs> wow. Now, speaking of, I know, obviously, we just discussed your longevity in the industry. You have your new single that's out. So I know that you also work with some artists like Kenny Lattimore, Johnny Mathis, Dee Dee Bridgewater, Will Downing, and so many others. How is that? How has that felt also? You know, like I said, you're a legend. And now that you've worked with some of these more contemporary artists, how does that feel that you have such a history and such a notable, recognizable brand? And now that you're working with some of these newer artists too, how, how's that experience for you working with different people like that? Well, first of all, you mentioned Will Downing. I haven't worked with him yet. But mm -hmm. I will be working with Will Downing ju okay. come June 18th here mm -hmm. in Malibu, right here in LA, in Malibu. And that's going to be June 8th. It's a, you know, a, a it's billed as a jazz festival. Okay. Um, with will Downing and myself, and uh, there are going to be other artists as well. But as far as you mentioned, the other artists like Matt Johnny Mathis, Dee Dee Bridgewater, Kenny Lattimore, and then Kurt Elling as well. 
uh, the other people that I did a duet with on my last CD, my last album CD slash CD is called Let There Be Love. And it was, it just came out last year. And it was like, to me, the thrill, it was a thrill. It was, um, I would say, and then working with Johnny Mathis, who was iconic yeah. since the early 60s. Yeah. That was the thrill of my, that was the one, one of the thrills of my life. I've had other thrills, you know, working with other yeah. people. Mm-hmm. But uh, he working with Johnny when he walked into Capitol Records and and sitting next to me in the sound booth singing this duet, you, uh, you can't take that away from me. I was just in seventh heaven. And mm-hmm. then, of course, working with Dee Dee Bridgewater. Dee Dee and I have come along about the same time. And uh, I have uh, I've known of her work. And she is a, what, what you call what, a first... Uh-huh. Has made. She's a queen. This is dedicated to all my beautiful queens, all my beautiful ladies out there. She's a queen. Good queen. You got it, girl. She's a queen. You better represent. Go queen. Go queen. Go. Queen. Go. She's a queen about a business. Queen. Working hard on a mission. what you call what a first class jazz artist mm-hmm. and uh, it was so much fun working with Dee Dee because we did more than one song we did moaning and doodling and they're both I mean they were both the lyrics were both written by John Hendrix uh-huh. and um, uh, it was one uh, let's say doodling was a song that was created was just an instrumental that was done by Horace Silver Mm -hmm. and um so I just and then she had I think she had a a a a relationship a a professional uh relationship with Horace Silver back in her past having worked with him and I also knew him as well back in the early days back in the 60s back in New York but Mm -hmm. um we Bobby Timmons wrote Monin see the both of these songs were were both instrumentalist they were both oh. instrumental only. And mm-hmm. then John Hendricks came along and said, I'm going to put some lyrics to these songs. And he did. And of course, he re- he also recorded those songs as, as well, you know, when he was with that group, Lambert, Hendricks, and Ross. So okay. we, um, I decided, I chose the songs myself. Mm-hmm. And then the arranger is Gordon Goodwin. And I have to give him credit because he put it together in an arrangement where he combined both the songs because that's how I wanted it done. Right. And Dee Dee was delighted to do it with me. And I and I appreciate the fact that she was able to come in and, and record with me. And then there was um, Kenny Lattimore. Oh my God. Uh, Kenny is, is, an, is, an, um, is a male vocalist beyond compare because Kenny not only sings R&B, he sings, he can sing jazz. He can, cause he can adjust his voice to singing jazz. Mm. And also I went to see him, I've seen him in, in person perform to do his act, you know, um, pers- you know, out in, you know, at, at a venue. Mm-hmm. Kenny can even sing classical. Mm. He can sing, he can sing opera. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. like, "What?" I said, and I mean, not only just sing it, but do it well. Do it well. It wasn't like, "Oh well, he's a att- he's attempting to do it," but he was doing it, and he was thrown down. And I said, "You know, Kenny's just a gifted, blessed man with his yeah. voice." Yes, mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. love him. I, I, he's a gr- and he's a wonderful person. Oh yeah, a he's- very nice person. And um, yeah, he's done well for himself. Mm-hmm. Now, speaking of those people, are there any other artists that you have, like maybe a wish list that you would like to collaborate with that you haven't had the chance to just as yet, as of yet? Ah, uh, 
Yeah, I would like to work with The Weeknd. Mm -hmm. I don't know what song we would do. I don't think we would do jazz. Mm -hmm. I think we would do something contemporary yeah. or something, you know, you know, that's more in what they call what what the kind of style that he does. I would do mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody uh, uh, working with a, a contemporary artist such as uh, The Weeknd, I would like to do that. Also, my old, uh, uh, he's a friend. I've known him. We've worked together before, but I've mm -hmm. never recorded with him. And that is P. Bo Bryson. Okay. Okay. I would love to do it. I would love to do a duet with P. Bo. Because we we've, we've worked together in shows, you know, but over in Europe, but uh, we've never recorded together. I'd love to do something with People Price, and he to me he's one of the outstanding male vocalists. Yes. Yes. yes nice. Nice. Now, like I said, you are beautiful. <laughs> You're a beautiful woman. Like you look absolutely great. What are just and I this is diving away from music, but just to give some advice or maybe some tips to some of the younger women who will be tuning in. How do you maintain and just stay so youthful? Do you have any particular regimens that you follow for self-care? And also as an artist, I'm sure you do a lot of touring, which can be tiring physically. How do you stay healthy and stay so youthful? Well, first of all, I tour, but I don't tour as much as I used to. And as you get older, and if anybody checks me out and say, well, how old is Frida? You're going to, if you check me out, you'll find out. But, and then you'll <laughs> say, wow, how do I do it? Yeah. You just basically try to stay healthy. You, first of all, I don't use, I don't smoke. I don't use like, like drugs, you know, or anything like that. That was I mean, of course, in my when I was in my twenties, I you know I did my thing, but, yeah. <laughs> but nowadays I just I drink a little. Well, I'll have a glass of wine, you know. I like red wine, but that's limited, you know. I don't drink I I don't drink like three or four glasses. It's like maybe a glass, yeah. you know what I'm saying, or mm -hmm. a glass of champagne, or maybe champagne. And if it's a a party or something like that, I'll have more than a glass, but. Um, and then I take supplements and honey, I take a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, I take everything. I take turmeric, cur curcumin. I take, you know, everything, vitamin A, B, C, B, uh, B12, B16, uh, zinc, uh, vitamin C. I take all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I take uh, a, lot of, a lot of supplements that address inflammation because mm -hmm. I have had a knee replacement. Mm -hmm. And I've had a shoulder replacement and that's due to arthritis. So uh -huh. I take a lot of supplements that address uh, gl glucosamine sulfate with chondroitin you know, that address inflammation. Mm -hmm. And I do that. So let's just say I'm not without any problem and any flaws. Okay. Yeah. I am not without any flaws. Mother, as they say in the commercial, you can't fool mother nature. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right right yeah so that and then of course you know you should drink a lot of you know drink water drink a lot of you know good you know purified water or kangen water um what else do i do oh during my i started this back in my early 30s i started going taking yoga in 1973 i started uh, going to yoga classes and i studied with bikram chowdhury who created the hot yoga who kind of mm -hmm. launched it, I'll put it that way, in this country. He's from India. He was from India and he's still around. He's um, gotten into a little trouble over the last few years. And But he uh, uh, he's from Calcutta, India. But he, mm -hmm. had a, he had a very successful, thriving yoga business here in Beverly Hills and in LA for years from the 70s up until like a, like 2000, let's see, when did that thing happen with him? He had gotten into some trouble. But anyway, uh, I've studied yoga and because of my recent situation with the arthritis and the knees, I've had to back off, off, back off of it to a certain point. I can, I work out with a trainer and I do go to a gym. So you still have to, you still have to remain active. 
You know, right. you got to do something. You got to either do walking or go to the, you know, join a gym and um, participate, you know, treadmill, uh, e elliptical and all that stuff. Do some weights, do some bilateral pull downs, you know, keep your body active, keep your joints, um, you know, keep all that active and mm -hmm. uh, just don't sit around and remain sedentary because that's like they say, if you don't use it, you lose it. And it's true. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. Now, going back to music, Band of Gold, of course, is an iconic song. And I recently saw you on The View a few months ago performing. How does it feel to just have a song that even now, after all this time, like I said, the song came out in 1970, mm -hmm. hear it now is easily identifiable. People still get excited. How does it feel to just have something that has set in stone? Like, I think currently in music right now, Music is not the same, you know, a lot of times people want that radio hit and it's forgotten. It's not necessarily a song that our future generations will be able to turn on, you know, at an That's event. That's true. You no, know, so, but, but you, of course, exact opposite. How does it feel that you do have something that is iconic, that will, has its place? Well, I will take this back to my, like I talked about my CD that I, that was released last year, Let There Be Love, which I have to say the producer that brought this whole concept to me, this whole idea, his name is Rodrigo Rios. He's uh, from Brazil. He's a drummer and he's the one that, that brought this idea and wanted to produce me. And of course, and if it wasn't for James Michael Getz, who was the executive. Michael Getz, who was the executive producer and was also involved in the creation of this project, uh, like songs like, like I did on that album, like I mentioned, You Can't Take That Away From Me, uh, Let There Be Love, and uh, You'd Be So Nice To Come Home To, and, uh, with Kurt Elling and uh, Kenny Lattimore, Let There Be Love. I mean, those are the songs that have, have lasted for decades, not years, decades because these are standards, American songbooks, and uh, Band of Gold has become like that. That was in 1970, and Band of Gold is still being played. It's still around, oh, and yeah. people resonate, I mean, identify with it. They'll say, oh, I remember that song back when I was a kid, you know, that kind of thing, right. uh, and you hear it, and, and you can identify with it, so right. I'm, I'm just, of course, because of Holland, Dozier, and Holland, because of Eddie Holland, Brian Holland, and Lamont Dozier, my dear buddies, we go, but we're all from Detroit. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a song. They gave me a song that has turned out to be a, an iconic standard in the R&B and pop field, and that is Band of Gold. I even wrote, that's, that's the title of my book. Yeah. We didn't talk about my book yet. I wrote a book that came out last year, my memoirs. All yes. about my life from the beginning to up to almost to now. And mm. uh, it's called Band of Gold, a memoir by Frida Payne, me, and Mark Bego. Mark Bego was the co-writer as well. Okay. And speaking of, that's what I want to ask you as well. Of course, you do have your memoir. How important was it for you to put your story in a book and to just share your story with the world? Like how important was that for you? And how was the experience going through? Cause you know, you have to go through your history, recall things and relive some things to put that down. How was the whole experience? It was cathartic because uh, I did have to do that. I did have to think, do I want to tell this? Do I want to tell that? Do I want to mention this person's name? You know, because some people have written books that I know of. But they have written books where they deliberately change the name of a person. Or they, they would say, they would refer to, let's say, a relationship or an affair. But they said, I don't want to mention the name because it, the person is still around or, you know, like, out of respect to the family, you know, and they don't do it. But then some of these situations 
like when I read someone's book and they'll refer to something like that and me having been a person that's been around or, or having uh, having known that person I already I know who they're referring to <laughs> so, so anyway I figured at this point in my life because I'm in my se- my late 70s um I said well what the heck what am I trying to hide I And it was really based on the fact that so many of my female peers have written books, Mm. a lot of them. So Mm -hmm. I said, well, wait a minute, all all these girls are writing their books. I said, I better hurry up and write mine because for the last 25, maybe 30 years, people have been approaching me about when am I going to write a book about Mm -hmm. my life? Mm -hmm. And uh, I find, and I almost thought I would never do it, but then I realized maybe I better put this down because they said, if you don't write it, somebody else will write it. And it yeah. may not, and, and it may not be correct. Mm, right. And you right. know, that was never so true. That was never so true because even in writing my book, just going through the process with Mark Bego, uh, by the way, we really got this done uh, during the pandemic, like 2020 and 2021, we really got this done. And we really started in 2019. Mm. And then when the pandemic came, it gave us so much time. Yeah. You know, you had nothing else to do, you know. So it was like, well, it can't do nothing. Remember in 2020, it was like almost a total lockdown from March, from March the 15th on for the whole year. And oh, then yeah. and then it went into 2021. So we mm. had a lot of time to like, uh, you know, talk on the phone because he's not even in LA, he's in Tucson, Arizona. So we were Mm -hmm. on the phone a lot, you know, for hours at a time. And um, I mean, just basic things that things that were miss, let's say had gotten me, he had gotten wrong or whatever. And I said, okay, Mark, let's change. Okay, let's correct this, do the, you know. So if somebody else decided to write a book about my life and I have nothing to do with it, there's Mm -hmm. no telling what they're gonna write or what they're going to create, or the the inconsistencies, the, the I mean, things that had been, were, were totally wrong, you know, that need to be corrected. And so everything in my book now is, is absolutely the truth, and it's correct. Wow. Wow. So, and if anything, and if anything, I probably didn't tell everything. <laughs> right, right. Now, like I said, you have an amazing journey. Obviously, you've been here for quite some time in this industry. What if just, and I know like, as we mentioned earlier, we touched on it briefly, how music has changed, you know? Mm-hmm. If you had to do it all over, Technique. knowing what you know now, is there uh-huh. anything you would have done differently as an artist, or just in your whole career as a whole, just knowing what you know now? Uh, well, rephrase that again. Knowing what you know now and yeah. just being in the industry for so long and things have changed quite a bit. If you had to start all over, is there anything that you would have done differently? Uh, if I were to start all over like now in these times or mm-hmm. back, back when I started? Knowing what you know now, if you had to start back over, let's oh, say- Oh, I see, I see, I see. Oh God, yes. Yes, definitely. You know, like we all make mistakes and we all go back and say, if I had, if I could go back and do this again, I would have done that (laughs) and not this. Mm -hmm. Or if I, or I, if I had the opportunity, if if I would have, I would have turned right instead of turning left, (laughs) that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I would have done some different, I would have done things a little differently, but also my, my theory in life is that whatever I did, I did based on what I thought was right. Right. And, and I also, I have to just rely on faith and that, and that maybe this is what God wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. Not that it might've been the best thing to do, the correct thing to do, but you know, there's some things when I think way back that I wish I hadn't done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, yeah. Now, with my platform, we do talk about self-love a lot. I do feel that self-love is just a fuel for, you know, like you said, to maybe accept certain things of the past, you know, that we can't change. Self-love helps us acquire our dreams to just have that confidence. How do you define self-love? And also, what role has self-love played in your life throughout your whole journey? Well, I have to just say that last night I was watching the Billboard Awards with uh, P. Diddy. Uh, it was in Las Vegas, live in Las Vegas, and they gave this the uh, man, he man, I guess iconic Lifetime Achievement Award to Mary J. Blige. Is am I correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was so proud of this woman because. You know, she's had she's had an amazing journey. And and she and I loved her speech from beginning to the very end. And at the very end, she said she learned to love herself. And loving yourself is a, an achievement because sometimes you you have this self-doubt or you don't, um, you have low self-esteem and the low self-esteem probably comes from things that have happened to you in your past and your childhood. Right. So learning to overcome that takes some, some work and self-love lifts you up and makes you a better person. So learning to love yourself is or loving yourself. Some people say, oh, you're so full of yourself. Some people put you down for that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I say, oh, you think you all of that, mm -hmm. you know? And then all I have to say to people who say that is that, yes, I do think I'm all of that. Mm -hmm. I am all of that. Yes. You know, deal with it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But also I you learn how to be kind to people you learn how to love other people too you know love them yeah. you know people I love my you know my sister I love my son um you know I love some of my, my friends and some of my, I love my relatives and you just and then some of the you know some of the people I meet along the way who are fans who I've gotten to know over the years I love them because they love me yeah I have to constantly work on that to be honest with you, I am extremely critical of myself. And uh, I even had to really uh, work on celebrating the now and not uh, be stressed about what's later, what's planned and things like that. Um, so it's a, I would say that it's an ongoing pro process. Uh, I have tried to do self-love by learning how to give myself grace. Um, if I am truly burnt out and I don't want to look at the computer, I don't want to do any work. <laughs> just being like, it's okay. You can be a couch potato today and just be a little lazy because obviously your mind needs a break. Um, or they love me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So somebody said, why do you love so-and-so so much? You know, they're just a friend. I said, I love them because they love me. Mm. It's simple, as simple as that. Yes, yes, mm. yes. I love that. Lastly, my question to you is, again, as such a legend, I know now the music industry has changed quite a bit. But with your wisdom and your knowledge, what advice would you have for young women who want to become artists? And like I said, the industry has changed a bit. A lot of people, they sound the same. They look the same. What's your advice for someone in order to stay true to themselves? I know it can be kind of hard right now. So what would you give someone as a point of advice with all the wisdom that you have in order to go in, who wants to join this business and who may be struggling with following the crowd and just trying to have that one hit wonder? What advice would you give them? Well, <clears throat> first of all, I would say never give up, keep pushing, keep struggling, keep doing what you believe in. And uh, I, will, I would also say, 
and, and you you have brought this up and mentioned this a few times now in our conversation. You said with the music today, it's kind of mundane. It's kind of it's not as as as, as creative as music was in the seventies or the eighties, mm -hmm. and maybe even even the nineties. Yeah, um, and that is very true. Uh, it all it sounds the same. You don't hear any like a lot of sometimes you hear a person with a true talent a true gift in the vocally and then and then and 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 when you hear them perform you get goosebumps a lot of these entertainers that that are around now that i hear especially when i was watching the billboard awards last night and i and not all of them but like some of them i said to myself i don't get it you know it's like there's no true voice there. The song is like, eh. mm -hmm. and you, but then this is a song that's become a hit song. Right. And you realize the public, the youth today have been dumbed down. Mm -hmm. And I mean that the youth yeah. today, the millennials and the youth today have been terribly dumbed down because they say, if you feed them slop, that's what they're going to like Oof. because they don't know any better. And that's it. That's mm. it. Wow. So, but then there are the artists who are superior. You know, you have like, um, like, oh, that so Sonic. What's that? Oh, God, my, you know, my Silk brain Sonic. is. Silk Sonic and. And. Bro Bruno Mars. Mm -hmm. Now, Bruno Mars, specifically, because he's the lead singer on that, he is fan. Now, he's the real deal. Oh, he's yeah. The real, true talent. With, he's got the voice. He's got the moves. He's got the look. He is a real superstar. And Silk Sonic as well. And they, and they, they like, to me, they save it. They, they, they save the whole movement of R&B music. They yeah. do. They, they bring it. And then there are other people as well. Uh, Gastalion. What's her name? Um, hey, Gastalion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I like her. And I, I was happy to see she kind of toned down last night. Mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. showing her body a lot, the nudity mm -hmm. and all like that. And she's got the body to show yeah okay she's got the body to show uh but at the same time this is something that never existed back in the 60s right. or the 70s you never this wasn't how a singer presented herself right a real true singer did not uh rely on just selling sex alone now some people say that i did that myself but not like that I mean, I wore the mini skirts, the short, short, short skirts, uh, but I didn't show my naked bare ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that. I, you know, I can, well, and nowadays at my age, if I, buy, I don't have the same body I had like 20 or 30 years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's like you say, this is one of the, one of the changes that we've seen happen and like you said compared to today yesterday it was all it was more about the talent the real talent than right. how naked can you get yeah and how many bumps and grinds can you do mm -hmm. and it wasn't about that back right. in the day it was about truth it was about talent mm -hmm. it wasn't about okay uh I'm gonna like come out and be and, and not have hardly any clothes on. I mean, nowadays, I mean, it was it was in a way. It's, I guess, it's entertaining because I guess a guy would have a different point of view. You know, men <laughs> would say, "Oh yeah, I oh that's I dig that. That's all right." <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's also, I, I I think of the young girls, the young kid, the young girls in their early teens, and even younger than that. What kind of message is that sending to them yeah. as young women? Right, right. That's like saying, it's like, I don't know. 
It's like saying, I got to be almost naked in order to make it. Yeah. Mm. And whatever else that comes with it. Right. Oh, yeah. That's all I got to say. I appreciate your transparency. And I completely agree. You know, I just, music has just changed drastically, obviously. You know, I was born in the 70s. So when I look at music now, and obviously with the heavy R&B period that I experienced growing up and just when you do a comparison and contrast, things are just, you know, starsely different. So I definitely appreciate getting your perspective on that. This has been an amazing conversation. Like you have so much wisdom. I love it so much. Before we end everything, can you please tell people how they can purchase your book, what they can look forward to, how they can connect with you and get, how they can be up to date with everything that you have going on later this year. I know you got the EP coming out later you have the single that's out now so just tell everyone how they can connect with you and learn more okay just simply go to my website www.freedapain.com and you can either you can check my website out there's all there's the information on how to contact me uh you can sign up for the newsletter you can um I mean, that's everything is there. The book you can order on Amazon. You can order the book on Amazon or through the website. Uh, but I would go to Amazon because you can get a book. You can order it and get it in two days or you know whatever. Mm -hmm. Amazon Prime, yeah, you can get it in a day. Uh, the, the music, just go to my website. Uh, my CD, the last CD I did with all the duets, you can get that on, you can uh, order it on my website or you can go to Pandora, Spotify, uh, all the, all those other um, uh, uh, media, you know, like, like uh, media apps that they have out there. Yeah, right. Awesome. Nelly must have did this beat. <laughs>